So today we're going to talk about the expression node. It can be very useful and powerful in some situations. And today we're going to explore some of the more practical approaches to it without getting too deep into the syntax of things. And to support today's session, we're going to go to that article, not the part that I wrote on, but to the part that Matt wrote, which has to do with some useful and mathematical expressions to do some practical things. And that's exactly what we're going to explore. So the article that I'm talking about is this one here that is very easy to find on Wikipedia. It's called Expression 101. And as you can see, it was written by Matt Stella and me. But the part that we're going to talk about is the part that was originally written by Matt. So if you go down here, there's a few useful things that you can read about on how to get to certain effects like this but what I would like to explore with you today it's this effect to start with okay I'm not gonna get into how you get here and why you get here you can do that on your own by reading every step of the way that Matt did a great job on but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just grab the final expression for us to get this type of effect so I just copied it and then I'm gonna go to nuke and I'm gonna drop it in straight like that on the right channel so what we see here is we have some mathematical notation here hypotenuse and sine and then we have the x and y but we also have two unknowns which are the center and the size so for the center as you can see we have x and y so we have to create this variable in x and y and we're going to take a look at that just next and the size is also a variable that we have to take into account but this one here doesn't depend on x and y so we can create this as a floating point slider so let's go to the center first so let's just copy the same name that we have in here and then we're going to go to manage user knob and you can add this as a 2d position knob because we have to have both x and y independently so we're just going to drop that variable there and now we're going to go with the size let's copy it and let's create another one but this time we're going to use a floating point slider because there's no dependency between x and y in the same way that we had with the previous one let's ignore the limits for now we'll change this later and as soon as you do something with these knobs if i now go here for example and increase the size here's what we have we have this that can be very useful for us in certain situations so let's increase the size past the limits that we have available to us until we get something like this so this is starting to look something that can actually be useful but the thing is it's cool to have the control on the size as we just picked it now but it will be also beneficial to have a different type of control that is not in the expression yet which is an offset in order for us to have the same size the location in which we want but we want this to move inwards or outwards right so we have to add another one that is not as i said in the expression and the place in which you're going to add this is going to be after the sign because the sign is the one that is going to give you this effect primarily so we want this whole thing to be affected by this offset that we're going to create now so let's really call it offset like this and we're going to plus that to whatever we have there so if i copy this one here and now create the offset as a floating point slider because once again this is not dependent on any axis so we can just create it like this okay and as soon as we start doing things you see that now we have this control so this will be an expression to have on our side with this addition that was not contemplated on the original expression let's go to the article and find another one that's going to be very useful so if you go down we get this stuff in here that is very cool so let's copy this once again i'm not going to get into how you get to this point because you can read this on your own let's just copy this part here and let's put that on now a different channel let's put this on the green channel and as you can see all these variables they are called the same we even have the offset here okay so what this means is once we enter this this is what we have so we have now these two expressions and the offset will also control both of them like this so now it's time for us probably to change the limits in which we have these things because at the moment this is too short so let's go to the size and maybe select from 1 to I don't know 50 
And this other one, the offset can be probably from zero to 10. You can see that now we have these things behaving as you would expect and looks kind of trippy. But we're not over yet because we have another one that we should put, which lives right at the beginning. So this one here, so let's copy this and let's put this on the blue channel. So now we have the blue channel also with something in it, which is this stuff in here. But unlike the other ones, this one here, the one that we just pasted in, we don't have the same variables as before because this expression, the way I copied it, has some hard-coded values and this is not what we want. So we want to also use the same variables, namely the size and the offset because the centering, this one doesn't really matter. So let's go to the offset and let's put the offset right after here. Let's put this offset plus something. And then this guy here, is going to be the size so we're gonna just do this and then delete that put another one there and that's it so now we have the size and the offset in the same way that we had the others and that's it so you know looking at this looks really trippy and you may wonder well why do i need this well there's actually a lot of cases in which you can use this stuff for creative purposes let's not forget that we have at our disposal the position okay the center of this guy we have the size of every single one of these patterns we have the offset that changes the position and for example one thing that we can do for example with the offset is to parent the offset with a frame statement so this will change automatically over time so let's take a look at one of the things that we can do for example i have this plane in here and this is just a you know, quick image, not a very beautiful one, by the way, but it's just the one that uh, I found on the internet to illustrate what I'm about to show you, which is we can fake the distortion and give a little bit more life to something like this, like this propeller. So for example, what we can do is we can shuffle this guy here, for example, the green, and if we have this green, we can either put this directly into the picture with a corner pin or we can put this as a card and if we do so we are on the 3d space so you know have full flexibility on how we want to apply these things but let's say that i want to put this as a corner pin first so i want to match basically the position so let's do this very quickly something like this but at the moment this is not moving so we have to put the offset parented to a frame and maybe we can have this parented to either another variable that we can use as a speed but at the moment i'm just going to multiply this by i don't know five or something like that and then we can change that to whatever we want but you see that now this is moving like that and you can put this moving as quicker or as slower as you want it's up to you it's you controlling it and as you will see at the end we're going to have like a master control in this example that you'll be able to tweak all of these things that we're about to talk about so at the moment the thing that is not working for me is the fact that we see the limits of our picture that we are putting on top of this one so what we can do is we can just you know use a radial so we can have this more at the center okay something like that so now we don't see the limits in the same way let's not forget we still have the ability of changing this still okay this is not going anywhere and now we can do whatever we can you know it's up to it's up to your imagination i'm going to show you the final output of what i did very quickly just to illustrate what the sort of things that you can do with this one so very quickly i was able to do this you know in just a few minutes could be better of course it's not my intention to show you the most refined kind of a look it's just to tell you that you know this is one of the things that uh, you can do with that sort of expressions and in this one here i actually had like a master control in which i'm as i said before i'm able to control both the speed i also put coming from the same source heat distortion radial distortion and rotational distortion and an overall mix so let me show you very quickly what i have in here so this is the picture what i ended up doing was you know creating a noise here just to put some blur beforehand then i use the same thing to create some heat distortion again i'm going to put this back to one so you'll see exactly what i'm talking about so this is the heat distortion coming from you know the same source as i said and then what i end up doing was using both of them the green and the red channel applied like this and then i'm going to use them as vectors to distort things in different ways so i'm going to distort this like that okay so i have both of them and then at the end what i end up doing was to just you know take some of the blades 
and put them on the top so we'll fake that kind of uh, rotational feeling and then every single thing that i just showed you is linked to this propeller fx this could be for example a setup that you do for your teams if you happen to lead teams and you'll be rest assured that you know people are using this and it's very easy to control because they only have like a few knobs available to them but as you can see this is one of the examples let me show you other examples with this expression you can create like very trippy kind of effects that you can use them to whatever it can be a magical effect it's up to you really in this one here i end up like just doing this stuff to create some sort of weird more effect so you know this is one of the applications as well that you can use and it's really up to you how much or, or how far you want to take this expression it's really up to you there is no right or wrong it's whatever you feel it's working best for you in this one i end up using this type of stuff and this can be very very trippy also if you try or end up tweaking the size as well like this and you can parent the size to whatever so you can see that this can be very trippy as well and there's a ton of things that you can do with it it's up to your imagination as i said another thing you can do with this is this rippling effect that you can also associate with distorting a nasty map instead of the final image beforehand so this will give you a little bit more control and this is what i end up doing here so what i end up doing here is i have this one as a static one and then i have another one that it's moving and a little bit smaller and it's moving over time and this one happens to be distorting the fixed one so you know you can play with things like this and you end up with this type of effect that looks you know kind of organic and you can then blur the vectors that you're about to export and in this case instead of distorting the image directly i end up distorting the sd map beforehand and then i'm applying the effect as an sd map so this will be my sd map in which i'm going to apply things and doing things on an sd map as we saw before gives more control so the image looks like this and with that we end up doing this so it's another application for that kind of stuff Apart from a 2D effect as a water rippling effect, you can also use this actually to create displacement maps in the same kind of a way. So if I have this part of the expression, the red bit, I can then do the same thing, which is just masking, you know, the ends off if we want. At least we have that control, okay? And then you can use this as, uh, you know, a displacement map to displace your geo, whatever that might be. And then you can have this type of you know very organic kind of a feeling that you will see in just a second that can be the base to drive for example shock waves or to drive water rippling or something like that in 3d instead of 2d it's again up to you but as you can see this looks very organic and takes no time at all you see the amount of those that we have in here it's very minimal so this is one of the other applications that i would like to show you another one based on the same concept is to create for example a flag in this case we're going to use the other part of the expression which is this part in here okay so we have the blue channel that contains this and in this case you know for the flag i know that the end bits of the flag you know they move faster in comparison with the ones where we have the pole so i end up using an sd map to exactly change the original shape of this guy to become something like this and now i have you know things moving like this but i know that the end bit will move slightly different in comparison with the one where the pole should be if this were to be a flag so additional to this i'm gonna distort this so i just break the perfection of the lines because we know that nothing in nature is that perfect so i end up making this part completely black so i don't have any movement and then i'm gonna use this as my displacement map for something that i can use as a 3d flag so if I look at my 3D system, this is exactly what I have. So, you know, very simply, with just a couple of nodes, I'm able to do something that otherwise probably would take me more time. So again, all coming primarily from those three expressions only, and then you decide which one or which ones you want to use. So let's take a look at another example. So another one that you probably thought of immediately, it was probably the first one that you thought about, it's the one that has to do with this type of radar kind of a thing, old school James Bond kind of movies in which you have this type of stuff, 
So again, all coming from that same expression, just making it a little bit smaller with just a grade. So I take some of the semi-transparent areas so I can open more gaps between them, but it's really up to you the type of control that you want to do that. The final example that I would like to show you, because you know, the imagination is your limit really. So I'm trying to come up with as many different examples as I could, but the imagination is really your limit. But I thought to end with this one because I've used this type of technique in movies that we all know. And in this case, it was to create a thruster that I'm not trying to defend the end look of this, but it's just to tell you that you can create this sort of effect for thrusters as well. I did this very quickly, but you can use that kind of stuff to create this type of, you know, sci-fi looking kind of thrusters and you can add as many effects or variations of the effect as possible. In this case, the base for it is the same thing. As I told you before, you can distort things. In this case, I'm using my distortion to distort things in a slightly different way, which comes from this node that I created, which goes outside the scope of what I'm trying to tell you now. But it's just to tell you that, you know, I'm using this tool to distort things in whatever way that this gives me coming again from the same expression. So it's all the same thing. And by the end, you end up with the look that you are trying to pursue but the more you look at this kind of stuff the more things you will think on applying this but as you can see expressions can be used to achieve very interesting and quick effects creatively speaking so it's not only for technical purposes and this is what i would like to show you today hope you liked it and see you next time